Okay, so we have our code into version control. And now we want to move to the next step of CI CD, which is to build and test our code. And for this, we'll use the code build service. So we'll click on getting started and I'll keep the code commit open in my first tab. So here in code build, I can go ahead and build and test my code with elastic scaling. The idea with code, with code build is that it will launch Docker containers for us, provision them, and then shut them down after we're done building and or testing our code. And the really cool thing about it is that it's serverless, we just need to say how we want our code to be built and tested, and code build will do that for you, and we'll only pay for the time of the build time we use. So that's very, very handy, obviously. So let's get started and, lar uh, and launch our code build. So we'll create a project, and the project will be my web app code build. And excellent, we can have a description and we can also have a build bash if you want it to, but we'll just won't configure it right now. So what do we want to build in the first place? Well, we have our code right here. And our code is just an index.html file, so just a web file. And we want to eventually deploy it onto a web server. And we want to test whether or not that index.html file has the word congratulations in it, because if it doesn't have it, well, we think it's a bug. And so that's going to be our test. Obviously, a more complex app could be built in a more complex way and tested in more complex ways. So for this, we'll go back to code build, and we'll say, we, uh, we will test whether or not our index.html file has the word congratulations in it. Okay? Next, we could ask, uh, specify tags, but we won't. And so we need to specify where the source of our code is coming from. And in this case, we could specify code commit, and we will specify code commit. But we could have chosen no source, S3, GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitHub Enterprise. So we'll choose code commit, and we'll choose our repository, my web page. And here, as you can see, we have to specify a reference type. And that's very important. Either it's going to be a branch, or a git tag, or a commit ID. So a commit ID is a specific version that we want to test. So do I want to test my first commit, my v2, v3, v4, v5, or do I want to test a tag? A tag is when you're saying, okay, this is version one of my repository and you're done, or version two and you're done. And a branch is how to test ongoing code. So we'll test master. And okay, we could specify a commit ID to test as well, but for now, we'll just say master. And we will fetch master, and the latest commit in master is the one we did, which is this one, which is edited index.html, and that was done a few minutes ago. We could specify some additional configuration if we're using git submodules, but this is more advanced and not needed for the exam. So for now, what you need to remember is that we select our source provider to be code commit, but we could have had other source providers. And then we say in code commit, what do we want to fetch and test? We could have said commit ID, git tag, or branch, and which was branch and master. So as we can see here from this get go, if we wanted to test multiple branches, we would have to create multiple code build uh, projects. So here we'll test on master and I'll say uh, my web app could build master. This way we're very certain that it's master. Okay, I'll scroll down and now we choose the environments. So we can either use the images that are managed by code build and they're really good or we could specify our own custom Docker image if we needed to have some specific software installed on our image to perform our build and our test. For now, we'll use a managed image by code build. And for operating system, we'll choose Amazon Linux 2. And for the run times, we'll choose standard. And the image, we'll choose this one. And we'll always use the latest image for this runtime version. Okay, now we're ready. We have to create a service role. So a service role is what will allow code build to do what it needs to do. And so for this, we'll create a service role automatically called code build, my web app code build service role. And in there, I'm able to specify some additional configurations, such as the timeout. So how long I want my build to go for until it times out and fails. So one hour, but it could be between five minutes and eight hours. So what we want to see here from a DevOps perspective is that we are able to run some very, very long builds and very, very long tests. So as such, code build is a great candidate for running uh, performance testing, for running functional testing, integration testing, and so on. Whereas uh, Lambda, if you 
are asked about whether Lambda is better than code build for running tests. Well, Lambda has a timeout of 15 minutes, so you cannot do many, many things in Lambda. So code build is much better suited because it can go between five minutes and eight hours for a timeout. So I'll choose one hour as the default. Then there is a queue timeout. So code build is a concept of uh, queue. And so every time you want to build or a test to happen, it will go into a queue and code build will uh, queue these up and do them one by one or in parallel, obviously. And then finally, if you want to have a VPC in which to execute your code build project. And this is only if you're using resources within your VPC for whatever reason. But for now, we're not using any VPC, so we'll not set up anything. Now you can say how performant you want your Docker containers in code build to be. And by this, you specify how much memory and how many vCPUs, so virtual CPUs, you want to have. And obviously, the more, the more uh, performant it will be, but the more you'll have to pay will keep with three gigabyte memory and two vCPU. We can also set up some environment variables for this container, but for now we won't do it. Now there is the most important section, which is co uh, build spec. And we'll have a deep dive on build spec in this course. So for now, we'll say, okay, we'll use a build spec file. And it turns out that we have already created a build spec.yaml file into our code commit repository. So that's perfect. If the file had a different file name or it was not in the root, of our repository, then we could set up a different name here. And then for artifacts, what artifacts do we want to push at the end? For now, we'll select no artifacts, but we'll talk about artifacts in depth in a future lecture. Then for logging, where do we want to send the logs happening in code build? Well, we want to send them into CloudWatch, and we could set up a group name or a stream name if you wanted to, or and or S3 and we could set up a bucket and a path prefix. The reason we want to send the logs to CloudWatch and to S3 is that we do not want to lose the logs after the Docker container is gone, because if things fail or things work, we want to be able to still do some debugging. So I'll click on Create Build Project, and it's just been created. So the configuration, we could obviously edit it and get back to all the configurations we just did, but this is fine. What we want to do now is start a build. So we'll click on Start New Build, and we'll choose the same timeout as before, and we cannot change the source, but we could say a different branch, git tag or commit ID if you wanted to. And we could also set some environment variables override. For now, I'll just click on start build. And now the build has started. And that means that a Docker container will be started by code build. And it will take all the code from this code commit repository and test it according to the specification in the build spec.yaml. Now in the next lecture, we'll see exactly what this file does. So for now, let's not focus about this too much. Back into our build, we need to wait for the build to start and happen. So let's wait a few seconds. And here we can see that some logs are already starting. So we have a few commands being run at the time. And the, we can have the option to view the entire log into CloudWatch. So if I click on CloudWatch, here we have the entire log that happened. So we could review it if you wanted to. Let's go back to code build. And uh, the, now we can see that the build has been successful and it succeeded. So that means that all the code we have right here in this code commit repository is compliant and passes the test suite that we have into the build spec.yaml file. So this is a very 101 of code build, but we'll go deeper in the next lecture and see all the options we have. But for now, we've created a build project and then we've run our first build and it was successful, which is very reassuring. So one really cool thing to see is that the duration was 32 seconds and this is how much we've been billed for this build. So 32 seconds has elapsed. This is how much we'll uh, this build cost for us. And the really cool thing is that it's been elastic. The Docker container is now gone and I'm not paying for it anymore. So all the resources are created in an elastic manner, in a serverless manner for code build. And that makes it extremely flexible and a really great building and testing engine within AWS. And the DevOps exam will ask you questions around choosing the best way to test your code. Is it from EC2? Is it from code build? Is it from Jenkins? And we'll see what Jenkins is in this, in this section, obviously. But the idea is that with code build, everything is serverless and everything is just used the right way. And when it's gone, it's gone and we don't pay for it anymore. All right, that's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next lecture.